Samson, a very good morning to you and our cherished viewers and my uh, colleague panelists in the studio. I have said that um, the fact that Donald Trump has won elections in the United States of America does not necessarily mean that Party A or Party B will win elections in Ghana. I don't think so. You know, um, in times past, Ghana used to have a very striking resemblance, or if you like, um, a common feature that we shared with the United States of America in terms of regime change. And it used to be a time where any time Americans voted for change, we also saw change in Ghana. But that changed in 2020. When Americans voted for change, they voted against Donald Trump. But in Ghana, Nanado Danko Kufu had won, at least per the official uh, results declared by the left. He was retained. Ghana. He was retained. Okay, so um, that was a departure from what the trend had been. And so I'm not one of those who think that the mere fact that Donald Trump wins an election, then that means the NDC will win an election or the MPP will win an election because their symbol is the elephant. What happened in the U.S. was not a contest between symbols. It was a contest premised on critical issues. But for me, this is the relevant part. The outcome of the U.S. election has some stark parallels with the ongoing campaign in Ghana. If you're a student of politics, you cannot but agree with me that there are significant parallels between the just ended U.S. campaign, that is that of the Republicans and the Democrats, vis-a-vis -vis what is going on in Ghana today, the MPP's campaign versus that of the NDC. And therefore, there are useful lessons that both parties need to draw from the outcome. There are useful lessons that the people of Ghana need to draw from the outcome of the U.S. election. What are these perils? Look, I can say that the campaign run by Vice President Kamala Harris is on all fours with a campaign being run by Vice President Baumia. How exactly? Because here was a certain Vice President in the United States of America campaigning on the ticket of her own party and preaching change, attempting to distance herself from policies of the government that she's passed and parcel off, creating the impression that she will be her own woman. In fact, she even said that she, her government was not going to be a continuation of the government of Joe Biden. You understand? And so you saw a vice president pretending to be an opposition leader in his own government and even trying to preach against policies that his government, her government, had implemented. That is the same thing happening in Ghana, where you have a certain vice president, Alaj Baumia, claiming to be a mere driver's mate in his own government, even though he is a chairman of the economic management team. And the president has told us that when it comes to the economy, he is the alpha and the omega. He is the economic messiah and whiskey that Ghana needs. And today, he is telling Ghanaians that, look, my party is in power. I am the vice president of that government and chairman of the economic management team. But you are going through many problems, including high taxes. Taxes that my own party, which is in government, has imposed on you. But vote for my party. And when I become president, I will scrap those taxes. Have you heard this before? This is simply contradictory. This is double speak. This is hypocritical. And when he's asked, why don't you do that now, since you have the power, your party, on whose ticket you are running is in office, and all these things are in the manifesto of your party, you are the leader, why don't you do that now? He laughs and says, oh, if I do this now, what will be there for me to do tomorrow when I win power? That was in jest. Not in jest. It no. was in jest. He meant that seriously, he never took it back. I said jest by him, and I, I could no, no, see no, no. he was no, just no, 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 having no. a joke. No, you were, you were in that video. <laughs> and I'm sure you yourself could not believe that the vice president was saying that. You understand that? Why do I do it now? But people are suffering now. People are dying now. You don't care because you want to win power and have work to do tomorrow. You won't do the important things that ought to be done today. 
So you hear him say that, oh, utilities are so high, but I have both solutions. Both solutions for the problem that his own government has created in the last eight years. And you never hear him talking about both solutions for the ever depreciating CD. So I say that Baumia and Kamala Harris both run, or if in the case of Baumia, he is running a campaign very similar to that of Kamala Harris because they are all attempting to escapade themselves from liability and responsibility. Mm. They are attempting in futility to distance themselves from their own government. You see, pe the people of this country are descending, just like the people of America. And just like the people of America did not buy that, I know that the people of Ghana will not buy that campaign of Baumia because it's one and the same as a Kufuado. He is, he, you cannot separate him from the MPP. And so he cannot be telling us to vote for him to come and change what the MPP has done to us, destroying our economy, when the MPP is in power and can do those things today. A vote for Akufu, uh, Baumia is nothing but a tete vote for Akufuado. And I know that the same thing Six percent of that. the people voted who voted for Trump mm -hmm. voted for him on the basis of his capacity to transform the economy. Yeah. And they referred to his track record. Yeah. Can Ghanaians say the same? Emphatically, yes. That is why I say that they are a lot of significant perils. Look, in America, the main issue that voters considered in making their choice was the economy, like you said. And what was that economic issue that was really at the, at, at, uh, on the, front, uh, at the forefront of Trump's campaign? Inflation, high inflation. Is inflation a problem in Ghana today? Yes. In 2022, something, we had inflation rise to an unprecedented high of 54%, the highest in the last 50 years. That totally eroded the capital and profit margins of businesses. Many people lost their jobs and their businesses and their livelihoods because of that. And according to the World Bank, it is because this government recklessly decided to get a central bank to print over 45 billion cities for them in 2022 alone. That is what led to that hyperinflation mm. that, according to the World Bank again, okay. plunged over 800,000 people into poverty. Now, something in our case, it is not just inflation. We have defaulted on our debt obligations as a country under the MPP and under the watch of Baumia as chairman of the economic management team for the first time in 50 years. Today, our economy, which was rated B minus under Mahama, is rated junk. Today, unemployment in Ghana has risen from 8.4% under Mahama, according to the Ghana Statistical Service, to close to 15%. Today, you need more than 17 Ghana cities to buy a dollar. When under Mahama, Ghanaians know that they needed just about four cities, 20 pesos. That is when the dollar was at its highest, you understand, rates per the city. Today in Ghana, interest rates are hovering around 35%, 40%. Businesses are dying. Businesses are relocating from Ghana to Cote d'Ivoire, to Togo, to Burkina, to Nigeria. Job losses all over. You cannot tell me that this economy we have today can be compared to the economy under Joe Bahama. Mm. And so clearly Ghanaians know that Joe Bahama has a proven track record in terms of sound management of the economy. And that is a safe pair of hands that we can trust to steer Ghana out of the so, economic so malice. See, so you see, and, and, voters, and we've been plunged. Voters, voters.